Now today we'll be replacing oil cooling lines. Now I'm going to clean this up so you get a better shot, but this is in fact the metal cooling lines that run from the firewall up toward the radiator. So we'll remove the battery, the overflow bottle here. But as you can see, let me give you another view. This is a 2010 Subaru, 140,000 miles. And it's starting to bubble here, but I'll start the vehicle. Right down here really is where uh, the leak is occurring. Now if we look straight down, not sure if the camera can pick that up, but there you go. As you can see, it has a really nasty leak. Now it's not the rubber lines, because I replaced those around a year ago when we did the timing belt replacement. And if you look closely enough, you can really see that the metal line is just completely done. So let's go ahead and swap it out. Now because the metal lines are a little difficult to get to, I just want to clean this up as much as I can. So I'll start by removing the battery. And this is just a little PB blaster. A little too much, but nonetheless. Good time to clean up this battery too. There we go. So right here, now we have a little bit more working room. There's a tab, which I'll show you in a moment, or a fastener holding this down. We'll spray some uh, PB Blaster on that as well, but I just want to move this overflow bottle. Just give me some more working room. Now, something I often do is take a look at the brand new part. So on this vehicle, we can easily see one fastener, but looking at the new part, I know that in total, we have one, two, three, fasteners. So if you're working on a car, it's really hard to see. You're not sure if the fasteners, where they're located. Look at the brand new part, notice where they are, and then just find it on your vehicle. So again, one, there's one right here, and then we should have another one. A little hard to see, but right there is the third one. So here's another view from underneath the vehicle, and a lot of times these can really solidify on here. Very good time to replace these, by the way. Again, these are only about a year old. Now, if you're replacing them, what I tend to do is I'll grab a pair of pliers, grip it here, and just rotate it like this. You see how it already loosens up from the metal line? Same thing on this one. And then one hand I'll pull, and the other one I'll grab a flathead and sort of push down. Let's see if I can do this here sort of push down. Again, take your time. This vehicle, of course, living in the northeast. There we go. That was quick. A drain pin. And then we'll grab the other one. There we go. Okay. Now, to get to those rear lines, you can really try from up top. You can use something like this, which is made for pulling hoses, really. But I've used these in a pinch, to Just squeeze clamps and pull them off. But I think in this case, it's just going to be easier uh, from the bottom. Yeah, it's going to be a little, a little tough from up top. Okay. So here we have another view of the hoses from underneath the vehicle, but looking at this, I think it's going to be easier if I just remove them from the line going into the transmission and just pull off the part with the hoses on it. But I think in my case, I don't have to jack up the car. I can actually just get my hands under here and just remove these clamps. Again, take note where the hoses are going. I have cardboard underneath the vehicle. Now these have not been removed in nine years. So I'll just be a little patient. A little hard to see where I am right now. I think I'm pretty much there. There we go. Okay. Now what I'm doing is just marking off this hose so I know where it goes back. There we go. Okay. Now for this first one, 10 millimeter, and what I'm doing is taking a three pound sledge very carefully 
tap in this, okay? Because you don't want to hit the timing cover, which is this plastic piece right here. Okay, just to loosen it up. Now for this fastener, I'm using a breaker bar. Just to break it loose very gently. You don't want to put too much force because you can easily just rip the top of the fastener right off. There we go. Now for this last fastener toward the rear of the vehicle, I'm just going to use a 3 8 drive ratchet, 10 millimeter socket, and then I'm going to create an extension over the ratchet. I'll show you what I mean in a moment. First, just get it on here, nice and snug. Okay. And then, what I'm going to do, I'll zoom out and give you a different view in a moment. I'm grabbing a socket, along with a bunch of different extensions, just to give me that extra leverage. And again, just to give you another view, super long extension, place it over the end of the ratchet and now you have a, an incredibly long handle to get the job done. So here we have the old part pulled out of the vehicle. I did not have a long enough tripod to record it at the same time but nonetheless you just pull it out, snake it out and replace the part. So you just want to make sure everything lines up which the tabs do. We'll take off these rubber tabs on the end and also I'll use brand new hosing. So I'm just going to remove these old hoses here. Again, just slowly rotate them. So much easier once the part is on the bench. Okay, and if you don't know how to measure the diameter of a hose, I'll show you in a moment. Okay, now I have to make sure, actually I'm going to keep this one on because I don't want to mix these up. Okay, so we have two different sources on how to replace hosing. Option one is, this being a Subaru, I can visit the local Subaru dealer, I can visit an OEM website, and, re and purchase replacement hosing directly from Subaru. The advantage is I have the shape. In other words, when you purchase the hosing, it, the shape is exactly the way that the old part was. The disadvantage is the price. My guess is each hose here is probably nine to $14 each. Very expensive if you go that route. Option two is just measure the hosing. So I need to replace, let's say I'm just replacing this one hose. So when you go to the auto parts store, they'll ask you how many inches or how many feet you need the hosing to be. This is, let's say, rounded up because I can't really strain it out totally. But let's say this is roughly nine inches in length, okay? So I would purchase a foot. Always go a little bit higher when you need hosing. So I would pur purchase one feet worth of hosing. Now the second question is the diameter. In other words, how large is this opening? The inner diameter, not the outside but the inside. So taking a look at the tape measure, if I measure from my one foot marking to 13 inches, if I count all of these spaces, I have 16 spaces. There's one, two, three, four, eight, 12, 16. Okay, 16 spaces. So all that you do is you grab your hosing and measure the inner diameter. And I have seven markings. So this happens to be seven sixteenths of an inch. That's your diameter. Let me give you another example very quickly. Let's say you have a smaller hosing here. And I measure the hosing and I have six. Six sixteenths of an inch. Then what you want to do is divide the numerator and the denominator by two, if you can. So, if we have six, there we go, we have six sixteenths. You sort of have to play with it if it's lopsided like that, just strain it out. But 6 sixteenths divided by 2 is 3 eighths. So this would be 3 eighths of an inch. Okay, so in my case, I looked, you know, this is all the hosing I have, and unfortunately I don't have the right diameter. So I'm going to reinstall this anyway, and then just purchase the hosing later on and just do a quick swap, uh, just the rubber hosing, so we can get this done. 
With that being said, I'm just going to swap this out. Don't forget your line here. Okay. And then again, I just want to put the blue tape back on. What I did is off camera, I removed the tape and just cleaned the hosing off with some uh, cleaner purple power. Let's clean off the hosing and uh, make sure everything is nice and clean. Put this over here and then we'll just reinstall it in the vehicle, bolt it down, start the vehicle. Make sure we have no leaks. And uh, that's it. Okay, so now we'll just reinstall the battery. Everything is tightened down correctly. We'll start the vehicle and check for leaks. And then of course the last step is just checking for leaks. Looks like everything is in good shape. I'll also check the transmission fluid, make sure we have enough fluid in the uh, transmission. But that being said, that wraps up the uh, replacement. Thank you for watching. Questions, comments, please leave it below. And we'll see you next time.